All right, hello everyone. Welcome to our worship for this week. Our announcements. It is with great joy that I can report that Mount Pleasant's going to be returning to in-person worship next week, and so that'll be on June 21st. There's going to be a letter sent out to everyone with specifics on how worship will be conducted and what is expected of you if you want to enter for worship. And I'm going to give you just a brief summary of that now. Um, one thing that will be required is you are required to wear a mask while you're in church. If you do not have a mask or you forget your mask that day, we'll provide one for you. You're going to need to enter and exit only through the door at the top of the ramp. Those will be, that'll be the only door that's open. We're going to open up the doors at uh, about 8.55. So you'll come in, you'll get seated, and then we'll have worship, and then you'll leave. Um, we're not going to have a big uh, time to socialize inside the sanctuary. Uh, we're simply going to be doing worship. So um, I know that it feels like we're not quite there, but we are not, and we are going to uh, continue to follow the guidelines that we need to. But I hope you feel, as I do, that this is a really great step uh, in, the, in, a, in the right direction for us. So our prayer list for this week, uh, please continue praying for Sandy Cook as she's recovering from her latest round of treatment. And please be praying for Linda Wetzel. She was uh, in and out of EVAN this week. Our call to worship and your response this week will be, Hear us, Lord, and let us hear you. So, call to the Lord who hears our prayers. Listen to the Lord who calls all of us to obedience. Open our hearts and our minds to your call, Lord. In our opening prayer, Father God, we are so grateful to have the chance to come to you with all things. Help us, Lord, to open our ears and our hearts to listen to your call. Help us to have the strength and conviction to follow what you lay on our hearts. Amen. Our scripture reading this week comes from Psalms 116, verses 1 through 14. I love the Lord because he hears my request for mercy. I'll call out to him as long as I live, because he listens closely to me. Death's ropes bound me. The distress of the grave found me. I came face to face with trouble and grief. So I called on the Lord's name. Lord, please save me. The Lord is merciful and righteous. Our God is compassionate. The Lord protects simple folk. He saves me whenever I am brought down. I tell myself, you can be at peace again, because the Lord has been good to you. You, God, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, and my foot from stumbling. So I'll walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I have remained faithful, even when I said, I am suffering so badly. Even when... Even when I said out of fear... Everyone is a liar. What can I give back to the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I'll lift up the cup of salvation. I'll call on the Lord's name. I'll keep the promises I made to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So our sermon this week, our title is God is Always Willing to Listen to You. Are you willing to listen to God? We are so privileged to be able to take anything at all at any time to God. How amazing is it that the creator of all things is willing to listen to us? But what is it that you're taking to God? I know that when I'm praying, I can find myself stuck sometimes. I just feel like I'm talking, I'm just taking all my complaints to God is what it kind of feels like at times. So I can feel like I'm talking to like a customer service line and I'm just ticking off all the things that have gone wrong. And yet he is still willing to hear me and not just to hear me, but to truly listen. Can you imagine that? Would you want to listen to someone 
or everyone complaining all day long about every little thing that's going wrong. But we are blessed to have that opportunity to take things to him. And we're blessed to have the opportunity to thank God for all the blessings that he's brought to us as well. So let's not forget to be joyous and raise up those great things that God has provided us and say thank you to him. When we look at our scripture for today, we see that the psalmist does both of these things. He calls out to the Lord in his darkest time. He says, when the, death, when the ropes of death are all around him, he calls out to the Lord, save me, and the Lord does. And then he praises the Lord for his deliverance, not only saying thank you for helping out of this situation, but by also making a pledge to God. In the end of our reading, he promises that he's going to fulfill his vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. This is a very powerful message for us, reminding us that we are to praise God, but also to keep the promises that we make to God. But the thing about prayer is that it's not just a one-way conversation. You see, God is not that customer service rep. He's not a therapist. He's not just passively hearing what we have to gripe about. He's an active participant, and he is listening, and he is responding. The question that I have for you today is, are you willing to listen to what God's telling you? There's a difference between hearing and listening. You hear with your ears. It is a passive action. And what I mean is, you have no choice but to hear. For example, have you ever been stuck in a car with someone that loves to sing at the top of their lungs, but maybe isn't all that good of a singer? All, everyone in my family can say yes to that. <laughs> or have you ever listened to someone speak that is just boring you to tears? Hopefully that's not the case when I'm speaking to you. So you have no choice but to hear that person. But you're probably doing everything you can not to listen. And I know that I've been accused sometimes of having selective listening. There are times when Carlin has to repeat things to me um, several times in order for me to get the point. You see, I hear her, and I hear her words, but I'm not listening. And this usually occurs to me when I'm allowing myself to be distracted by something else. So Carlin's trying to talk to me. I, I'm watching television, and I, I've been definitely guilty of this. So I'll be honest. I'll go, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, yep, and then have missed the entire conversation. Now, I am pretty good when I do that of stopping and saying, I apologize. I did not listen to what you said there. Can you please say it again? And as long as I don't make her repeat it three times, we're usually okay there. So is this how your relationship with God goes? When you're, talk when you're taking time to pray, are you remembering to take the time to listen also? Are you putting aside the other distractions of life so that you can focus on what God is trying to tell you? If not, is it, it's very easy to miss the message or to allow yourself to ignore the message that God is trying to give to you. And I'm sure these words have come out of your mouth if you're a parent, or maybe you can relate to hearing them being said to you. How many times have I told you whatever it is? You see, it doesn't matter how many times you have to tell your child something if they're not listening to you. Do you find yourself in the same place time after time when you pray? And what I mean is this. Do you pray about something in your life and then nothing changes? If so, I want you to consider this. Is there something that you are not listening to that God is trying to tell you when you're praying. When we're listening to God, we're not only using our ears. When we listen to what God is saying to us, we need to use our hearts. You see, when the Lord puts something on your heart, that is when you know that he is speaking to you. And I believe that we can listen to what God is telling us by listening and talking to others. You see, when we engage with our neighbors, you can often hear what they may need. 
you can hear that God is calling to you to help that person. And he's calling to you through that person. So it is important, especially in a time right now, when it seems that every conversation has a chance to become a heated discussion. That we continue listening to our neighbors and then trying to help them in any way that we can. As I said earlier, hearing is passive, but listening is active. And I don't believe that you've truly listened until you've responded. Just like our psalmist pledging to fulfill his vows, we too need to put into action what we are being told in order to have truly listened. So say that again. We too need to put into action what we are being told in order to show that we have truly listened. So brothers and sisters, what is it that God is trying to tell you? Do you need to make a change in your life? Is there something that's holding you back from fully embracing him? Is there a bad habit that you need to drop? Do you need to mend a relationship? Do you just need to take the time to listen? Are you out there longing to find him? Have you asked for his help only to reject what he's told you? Those are all questions that I want you to think about this week. And my challenge for you this week is that you take time to pray, to thank God for all the blessings that he's given you, and that you take time to open your heart and really listen for what God is telling you. And then you take action upon what God is telling you. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and we will see you hopefully in person at both services, uh, at both churches next week. Goodbye.